first off, if, is everyone familiar with the book that is uh, that is sitting over there? It's, that's where it normally lives. Is everyone familiar with it? So it's yeah. a it's a detailed uh, description of uh, the manual uh, cleaning of this scope. Um, one of my counterparts put it together. It has the IFU. The comp it's the competency checklist at the beginning. Uh, then it has the uh, the IFU, the Carl Storrs IFU, step by step for the cleaning or for the scope and the manual and all that. And then it also had goes into detail with uh, providing pictures of the connections of the scope. All right. So if you ever have any questions um, or you don't feel comfortable with uh, you know. The scope, I know there's a lot of connections on the scope. This uh, binder sits in that little cubby behind the computer where your Sensi Track computer is, all right? So, very handy. Um, did a really good job of uh, putting that together. Well, first off, we, we all know we want to do a leak test you know, yeah. prior here, right? Yeah. You will uh, do a dry leak test, pressurize it up to like 200, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I know you use the Vera scan, and then once it passes the dry leak test, you want to do the wet leak test. Drop it down to 160 per, you know, if you're using our um, uh, leak test, you drop it down to 160 for the wet leak test. Um, just what you don't want to see is the, you know, a drop in the needle, right? Because if that drops, it, it has a you know, failed leak test. And then um, at that point, if it fails the wet leak test, uh, you want to remove it out of the water immediately um, to make sure that um, it doesn't do any further damage to the scope. Also, when you do the wet leak test, you don't want to have any of these connections on the uh, on the scope, and you don't want to have the buttons on the scope. So you want to remove all the buttons and all of the you don't want to have any of the connections hooked up when you do the wet leak test. All right. Um, also, very important to make sure when you do the wet leak test or even dropping the scope in the water to be clean, you want to make sure that this cap right here is fully secure onto the uh, onto the scope. So you're going to, to attach it, and then you're going to turn it clockwise. To make sure that you have a, you know, I give it kind of a little light tug to make sure that the cap is, is you know, properly sealed uh, with the threads on the scope to make sure and what you don't want. The reason you don't want it to be loose is you don't want that fluid to walk, uh, to flow into the scope and damage any kind of uh, electrical mechanics in the scope and cause, you know, damage to the, to the scope. So, familiar, everyone okay with the dry and wet leak test? Yeah? One question. Or something. Well, you just do the dry, and then because the bird scan, you know, it, it captured. The uh, only time we do you a know, uh, leak test with the water, the wet test, uh, if it picks up a leak. Oh, if it picks up a leak on the bird scan? Yeah, right. All right. And then you go to the next step. Okay. Uh, the the bird scan, we, we go across the air, if it pick up the next step on the water, the wet test. If it don't pick up a leak in the beginning, then you just proceed. You just proceed with cleaning the scope? Right. All right. right. Um, and I'm sure that's fine. You know, it's probably approved and all that. But um, just I guess I, I just keep going back to like our IFUs with like using our leak tester. It's like for our, yeah, exactly for our IFUs with the leak tester. Um, you know, pressurize it to 200 for the dry. Once it passes it, you drop it, you press it down to 160, and then you do the wet. But if that's if you're comfortable with doing the bare scan and that's how you uh, you know you want to operate with it and use it, then you know. Just, you know, so if you just go ahead and do that, it's a group for it, I'm sure it is. Yeah. So, um, so once it passes the bear scan and you uh, want to proceed with doing the, uh, the the manual cleaning, you know, do your proper mixture of the enzymatic and some of the you know, into the water to make sure that um, you know, it's the right mixture. So, all right, and there, you know, if it has a hole, it needs a connection, right? All right, so you have your suction. Goes onto the suction port. Have your injection, right? Goes into the injection port. Just turn it clockwise to get it tight, right? And you're gonna keep this closed off when you use the scope buddy. Uh, there's no connection for the scope buddy to connect to this. So at the end, you're just gonna take your, um, take a syringe and flush fluid down it. All right. Then you have your suction and irrigation port that are going to go up top. Attach it. What you're going to do is you're going to attach it, 
And you take this little lever and push up. You know, it covers the hole so when you're doing your scope buddy, fluid isn't flowing out of it. Right here, this little doohick is going to go on the tip right there, and you're going to attach this to there. Everyone familiar with that? Comfortable with it? Um, and then at this point, you're going to use your scope buddy tube. No, so this is going to hook up to the scope buddy, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So. This hooks up to the tubing of the actual scope body. There's so many connections. Connect it. I'm getting one. And then you hook this up to the tubing in the uh, in the water, and then you what is the uh, recommended for the uh, what do y'all normally set it on for? So our IFU states you know at least 100 milliliters of fluid being with enzymatic being flushed through the scope, um, and you also want to irrigate um, or aspirate at least 100 milliliters of fluid up through the scope. Um, so once you do your connections and you flush the uh, enzymatic through every port. You're gonna hook it up to the uh, to the scope buddy and just do your your flushing and your aspirating of the scope. All right, all right. Um, when you also, you know, you always want to wipe off the uh, the the out the exterior of the scope to you take your 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 old sponge. Make sure it's you know with enzymatic, and you're gonna keep this in the uh, underneath of the water while you're cleaning it. Just wrap it around. And just give it a nice little gentle uh, pull down. You don't want to take it and you know squeeze it with a, some. I see we got some strong people in here, so you don't want to take it and just tug as hard as you can and stretch the rubber out um, on, on the scope. So, um, and then again, this one doesn't have a connection for the scope, buddy. Um, so just take your syringe, pull it up, attach it. And then just flush it through the uh, through the jet port. Normally, yeah. before we hook it up to the um, the scope body, we use the syringe to get the enzymatic to flush it. Oh, do you? Okay. Yes, we use. Um, we were asked to do that. Flush okay. It, so you so you flush every port before, before you put, brush uh, it, and then we hook it and up. And then you do it perfect. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, per RFU, you know, if I was to do this um, without the scope body. Um, you would always want to fl um, just flush 100 milliliters of enzymatic water through every port, um, which is great. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, the more fluid that goes down the scope of enzymatic, the better. You know, the more likely to get everything off. You know, it's a minimal of 100 milliliters, so the more, the, again, the more the better um, to make sure that all the, the debris and you know, you guys have cleaned the scope plenty of times. I'm sure they can get kind of dirty. So hopefully, hopefully. They're doing their pre-cleaning upstairs in the OR before they bring it back down, so that way it's it's a, a lot uh, easier for you all to clean when it gets down here if you can't get to it right away, right? Should I put it there? Yeah, like you're doing now. Uh huh. Push it. You push it out. Should I drop the air out like that or take the whole syringe out? I would just take, I take the. I, I would just take the whole syringe off. Okay. Detach it and okay. just draw. You know, draw it up again. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. And then just. When you're when you are doing the uh, when you are aspirating um, any scope, at least for hours, um, always make sure when you, whatever fluid you aspirate and pull up into the scope, fluid, just make sure you always flush it into a uh, into a different basin because you know if there is anything in that scope and you pull it up through the syringe. I see so many times where you know, they flush it back into the water, not, you know, it's, 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 you're here for eight hours, right? Like you yeah. just, you know, forgetful, mind, you know, unmindful, because you know, there's a lot going on, but um, whatever you pull up into the syringe, just make sure you put it into like an empty basin, empty sink, uh, throw it in, you know, rinse it, toss it into the, flush it into a trash can, okay. just because, you know, any kind of debris, you don't want to, you know, want those little boogers floating around when, you, uh, when you're cleaning the scope.
All right. And then we also, you know, recommend when you're doing the, um, at least when we, for our manual, when you're doing the syringe part, like if you didn't have the scope buddy, and let's say I draw up fluid, there's a hundred, you know, there's 50 cc's of fluid in here. Mm -hmm. And if you were to flush every port, the distal tip of the scope, mm -hmm. when you're flush, or even whatever port you're flushing, make mm -hmm. sure the whatever you're flushing, that side where the fluid's gonna come out, is, is like into an empty basin or okay. like an empty sink or something. So that way, whatever you're flushing through the scope, it's, it's not in floating in around into the sink. Okay. Or, you know, you have to use. Any questions about the connections? Like, is there anything that you might think? So, oh, well, just while we're on the brushing. So you want to make sure you, you know, you wipe off the exterior, get all the improper, you know, appropriate enzymatic um, on the scope, take your brushes. These things, you know, these procedures can kind of get dirty. They're you know, their, their hands are, you know, whoever's using it, you know, they're doing their buttons, their gloves are dirty. So you want to make sure that you're, you're getting the, the appropriate brush and you're getting the hard to reach spots when these uh, connections are off of the scope. Take your little brush right here, put it into the port, twist it 360 degrees. You're going to pull out and then just whatever kind of you pull out, just wipe it off. So that way you're again you're not just like with the syringe you're not putting any kind of dirty stuff and it kind of just defeats the purpose of uh, of, of cleaning this little port so a minimal of three times 360 wipe it off suction port 360 wipe it off a minimal of three times all right so once you do the enzymatic you're flushing every all the enzymatic through the water or through the scope with the enzymatic water um, rinse out your, you know, empty your sink. Um, I'm assuming do y'all change, do y'all have like a, like a enzymatic and then you have one with the rinse tubing? Like, or do you just use this as rinse tubing as clean water sorry. as well? Yeah. All right. So yeah, so then just empty out the water, um, clean, the, clean it out and, you know, in case there's any kind of debris up on the wall or anything, um, fill the sink back up. And then you kind of you just do the same steps with the uh, with the, uh, the cleaner water that you would with the uh, enzymatic. And basically, what you're doing is just flushing and, and aspirating the uh, the clean water up and through the scope to get all the enzymatic out of the scope. All right. Um, I think I did forget when you are doing the leak test. Um, just because sometimes the leak, you know, the hole in the leak on the scope isn't always in the same spot you want to deflect the distal tip of the scope when you're especially when you're doing the dry leak test deflect the distal tip um, five times in each direction so that way uh, there is any kind of damage on one side if it's in the distal formation like in the straight formation um, it's the if there is a cut it's closed so what you do is when you deflect it it just opens it up like if, you know maybe I mean, I, I guess the best comparison, and, you know, maybe someone has something better, but I always compare it to like uh, having like a scab on your elbow, right? Like it's, you know, it's fine, but then when you bend it, it just, you it know, it kind of yeah. just, you can, especially mine, my elbow's really ashy. So like, <laughs> you can, it just opens it, it opens it up and whatever. So, um, so that's kind of just, just basically doing the same thing when you flex the distal tip of the scope. And then also, um, when you're sticking these brushes, through any part of the scope, um, you want to make sure that the uh, the distal tip of the scope is in a straight formation, right? You don't want to have the, uh, the the brush hitting the interior part of the scope and poking at it, especially if it's the wrong size brush. And it looks, you know, you guys or have the appropriate size brush um, per you know storts with storts. So um, so you know, appropriate size. You don't want the brush uh, too small. You don't want it too big. Too small doesn't mean it's rubbing up against the wall and clean anything that might be stuck. Um, too big just means that it's it's over brushing the, uh, the interior part of the wall and it's scraping the channels of the scope and which can cause some uh, potential damage down the road as well. When you do the brushing up on these channels up here, so you want to make sure, how many of y'all have had trouble putting the uh, the brushes through the scope, right? Because you know there's yeah, two openings, yes. so you have to yes. emulate, you know, just Two's right, right? Yeah, yeah. What's that? Okay, we all have had trouble with that. Yeah, no, no, trust me. I, like, I, you know, when I, a few times that I've done all this, like, when I've demonstrated, it's, it's, 
it's so hard. But we all are aware of like uh, that there are like you know two ports, two brushes to put or two holes to put the brush in, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. So, I mean, I wish I could say. Isn't that brush is it brush? Yeah, it is. It is. But um, I was kind of just hoping maybe I could uh, just I don't know that's a, that's to demonstrate a, it. But you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish I could say I had an easier way to tell you guys, but I mean, I actually, I honestly have trouble when I do it too. Is it's, it's but we are, I mean, we all are that you know that there are two ports up there to clean, right? 